Hey, welcome to the Ladcast. As always, I'm Sasha, and welcome to the home of the future of football in America. On today's episode, our guest is Augustus McGiff, a prolific striker for Reading FC's under 23s. Check out his stats to the right, and um, while while you're looking it over, I just want to say that thanks so much for the su- support so far on the YouTube series and um, the subscribers we're getting, followers everywhere. It really means a lot, and um, you know, I want to create better content for you. And so, you know, let me know whatever. All right. Anyways, on to the episode. Let's get it. Alongside me, well, virtually at least, it's Augustus McGiff, the royally named center forward of Reading FC. I'm proud to actually announce uh, you're signing to the, the Ladcast Academy. You're just 18 years old, and um, you're, you're, you're working hard to stake a claim in uh, Reading's under-23s. How do you describe your season so far? Um, a lot of ups and downs, you know, started the season off, losing three zeros in Norwich against a very strong side that had Premier League striker up there, so... It was not an easy game. And the next game, losing 4 0 to Fulham was a blow because we wanted to beat them because we played them in preseason and we got smacked like 6 0. So we wanted to go into that game to win. First team staff was watching. I didn't start because I played earlier in the week. So, I mean, obviously you want to play every game, but, you know, my one thought was to make an impact off the bench, which I thought I did in the last 10 minutes. But, um, yeah, that game didn't go to plan. Lost 4 0. But you can't win them all, you know. Got to go into the next game head high. So we played an Aston Villa squad, which is the same, is basically the same squad you saw play against Liverpool. I played against all those kids in that game. We won two to one, and I scored my first goal of the season, in the actual season. And uh, really high um, training with the first team three days that week. And then uh, came back, ruptured my ankle. First training session back, so I was out for three months. That was tough, you know coming from such a high to such a low, but that's the sport, you know? So it's out for three months and then I'm just back now. You've actually managed a good few goals now. And mm-hmm. of course it'd be a crime not to mention this uh, absolute banger. This <laughs> is Char- Charlton last February. So yeah. um, we're going to run the clip. These are one of those you don't mind watching. Yeah, I mean, really. <laughs> Walk me, walk me through that that scenario. Um, what's going through your mind? Well, the funny thing was, right before that, a kid got a red card on me. Mm-hmm. So I was, fr- I was, because he hit me in the face. So um, there was a play right before, and the guy, there was a foul for us, and the kid tried to kick, like dribble the ball away so he wouldn't take it quick. So I kicked him off ball, and he turned around and hit me in my face, and the referee saw he was sent off, and I was, I was heated. You know, I just got punched in the face. And then I see the good build up, and I, my, my my one like thing that I do as a nine is I have to get to the penalty spot. So for some reason I just backed out, like I didn't go to the penalty spot, and the cross was behind me. And I've scored a few bikes, but obviously not like that in a circumstance like that. So I was just looking at the ball, and it was behind me, and I was like, "Damn, there's only one thing I can do." So I went for it. Because I knew what I was doing because, like, I've done it a, f- a few times, but not at that caliber and that level. So I just went for it and I went in and I didn't even believe it. I went to celebrate with my teammates and, like, I couldn't even process what just happened because, like, I didn't even see the ball go in, but I just saw everyone running. I didn't even, I didn't even see the ball go in. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, that was definitely, if not the best moment of my career so far. That was crazy. The thing about bicycles, though, is um, they look beautiful, right? But Mm-hmm. Wouldn't they like hurt? Don't they hurt when you <laughs> land? It's sort of like our adrenaline maybe kicks in. What yeah, it? Yeah. it might be the adrenaline, you know. But um, I mean, I don't know if you land it right. Like if you land on your shoulder, you don't do it right, then you're gonna get hurt. But if you could just balance yourself correctly, so you land elbow first and then fall onto your back, you should be fine. But yeah, I wouldn't unless you unless you're like you're experienced in it. I wouldn't recommend trying that. Like. If you're just playing around, yeah, it could hurt, definitely. So you actually mentioned before um, a, a 3-0 loss, I believe you said, to, to Norwich. So mm-hmm. I have actually a bit of an exclusive here. Um, so last week, I had Jonathan Tompkinson on the podcast. Uh, okay. He's an American center back uh, in the Norwich Academy, and I'm pretty yeah. sure he actually played against you. This is uh, let's, let's play the clip. Yeah, I think we played against a guy at Reading. I remember I heard the accent. I was like, where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from New York. I played for NYCFC before I came out here. Um, you know, it was nice to keep a clean sheet against them and stuff, and it was a good win. But yeah, 
that was a frustrating game, man. The referee was selling us. Oh, my God. I beat him on the line, and I cut back, and he grabbed me and threw me to the ground, which is cool. Like, you can do that. That's why you defend, but, like, oh, I was the referee didn't call, and I was going ballistic, bro. Mm. It was just such a frustrating game, and I, and I got around him because there was him and an Irish national team center back. They were very good. He's a, he's a very good player. He's a very good defender. And they read me very well, and I didn't have much opportunity. But that was the one opportunity I had, and I beat him on the line, and the referee didn't call, and I was like, damn. You know, those are the ones you want because that's your job, you know? So besides mm-hmm. that, of course, um, what's your craziest story so far in your football and career? I was at a New York City game, and there was um, – I was walking because we were leaving early because we had a game. And then um, I was walking, and then me and my dad, we look up, and there's Joe Hart. Like when he was in his like 2015, and his he was playing well. Mm. That's when he was at his peak of his career. We just saw him, and I was like, "Yo, what?" And I took a picture with him, and that was crazy. That was a crazy at, a, at New York City. Yeah, Yankee Stadium. I was I was just walking, and I saw him. And I took a picture with him. I don't think I have the picture anymore. It was on my old phone. But um, yeah, that was crazy. I remember just looking up, and there was like some huge men. It was Joe Hart. I was like, "Oh my god, he's huge!" Mm. And that was. Yeah, that was at like when I was young, so like I never experienced any like pro players, so that was like crazy. How have you grown since moving uh, moving to Reading over the over the summer of twenty nineteen? Hundred percent, because you know in New York, like in America, like the DA when I played, there was a DA, and um, obviously it's a good league, but like it wasn't like the competition is nothing like Reading, so you have to be a, you have to be two seconds quicker to a ball, you have to be two seconds smarter, your runs have to be better. It's like now, like all the little things start to matter. And those are the little things that can like make or break your career. You know, getting to the ball a second sooner, like getting in front of your man off of like a hesitation or run, go in and out. So it's like what I really learned from being in England is like focus is incredible in soccer. Like you have to be know everything you're doing. You got to be aware of where your guy is, where the other guy is. You got to know where your players are on the field because if not, you're going to get cracked. Because England's a, it's a feist, that's a feisty country when it comes to soccer. The soccer, man, it's crazy. How do you remember your, your move from New York to Reading, which is just a crazy thing to do at, at 17 years old? It was really weird because the way I got the move was my agent now is, um, I'm in the same agency as Matt Miazga. And they contacted Reading and I was going to, I was 16 at the time. I was playing with the U19s in England, in New York City. We played Brentford B, Reading, and Fulham. And I was just going there to be a sub just in case they needed me because, you know, I was playing with, like, Joe Scali, all, of, like, the names that you hear in England, Tavon Gray, or, I mean, in America. Like, Dante Polvaro won the national championship last year, Will Sands. So I was just there to, just, like, to, like, I guess, like, fill any gaps that needed. And um, we were playing Reading which was like, oh, I knew the one game that I needed to be playing well in because my agent told me that they're going to be watching me. And I was supposed to be on the bench and come on, whatever. Like, that's what I knew I was going to do. But then the kid who played in my position came down to breakfast late. So they're like, you're not going to start if you're not taking this seriously. So then I started and I played really well, you know, got a few shots off, wasn't able to score, but like I did my job well and Reading liked me, went on trial and then I signed. It was crazy. How, yeah, how, how, how big of a deal, um, did Matt Miazga have in this transfer? And, uh, you know, do you still keep some sort of contact with him to this to this day? Me and Matt, are, we're good friends. So I've hung out with him. I've went to his house a bunch of times. He's this amazing guy. His, uh, his fiance is a lovely woman. And, um, yeah, they're, they're awesome. And um, I don't know if it was Matt who had a tra- like a part in it. Like, obviously, him being there made, like, the transfer, like, happen better because my agents were in contact with Reddit. So it was like, because he was there, my agents had good contact with them. And then, yeah, they looked out for me and I played well. So got the, I got the, uh, the trial and I played well. So they signed. In your opinion, what, what is the way to make it as a footballer in America? You always just have to hold on to the dream that you can make it for. You know, that's what I did. And my, dr- my dream is always playing Champions League. And I'm still dreaming for that. I'm going to work hard until I get it. And I mean, I'm not going to settle for anything less. Like. I'm playing in England and I'm still not happy because I want to be at the next level, the next level, the next level. And you have to have that determination if you want to make it that far. You mean, you can't, like, obviously, like, Gio, he was, he's phenomenal. 
you know, he's been like that for forever. So that's like an expectation, for him, which is like the right mindset you have to have. Like you have to know you're going to make it because if you don't believe it yourself, you'll never do it. You know, you are actually, you know, a true melting pot of American culture. Um, your mm-hmm. mother is, uh, is a born and raised a Portuguese immigrant to the U.S. Yep. and your father is an Irishman. How mm-hmm. important is this uh, culture of background to you? It, it was actually huge because I was always in a Portuguese upbringing. So my, we have this place called the Portuguese American Center. So we would always go there as a childhood. And there would be all the people that came from Portugal looking for work, mainly in like the concrete, the you know, construction fields. And they would go there and they would be watching soccer all day. You know, it's like a European feel in America. So I was always born in that European environment. So I would always go there experience it like the Portuguese watching soccer and like having fun while playing it. And like, we would like the kids would be out there playing soccer outside for like hours and hours and hours and hours. So that's what I was, that's what I was like growing up as like, I was always in that, the, I guess, European cultural environment. So I think that really helped me, but it, but that's only half of it because you need to have the determination again, like, as I keep saying, the determination, even the physical attributes, being fast, being able to shift your body weight, being able to hold your own, like it, it, it all comes into play. But uh, you could do all of it if you just set your mind to it. Has has either the uh, the Portuguese FA or U.S. Soccer reached out to you? Uh, yeah, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. National Team, not the men's, but the the twenty the twenty ones mm-hmm. or the twenties. Um, yeah, they've reached out to me. Um, yeah, hopefully I get a shot over there. And if Portugal reaches out to me, of course, you got to go for that. You know? yeah. Playing with the likes of like, look at those players, like unbelievable. So, yeah, I mean, obviously I want to play for the country I was born in, raised in. So, yeah, I mean, if it came down to a choosing decision, which might not, but you never know, that would be a tough decision. Man. I don't know what I'd do. That would be crazy. All right. So before we close uh, in the late spirit of the new year, what's a goal that you have? for 2021 definitely make my first team debut um 100 that's my number one that's my short term um i don't see that as a long term because i know it's a goal that i can achieve mm. and um my long term 2021 end of 2021 i want to at least have a few caps with the youth national team get my feet right in the national team I haven't been there yet I want to set the standard show people what i'm like and um, impress everybody you know I just want to make sure that I don't waste any more time. You know, I'm 18. I'm still young, but you got to take, take what's yours. You know, you got to put everything in now. Don't waste a day. Augusta, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for your time and uh, spot out. Thank you.